Hi everyone, I'm Wendy Yi. I'm Chris Yi. Welcome to another Dice Tower Review. Today we'll be covering Bonfire, a game designed by Stefan Feld. So go ahead and listen up. Chris is going to give you an overview of the rules. setup for a game of Bonfire. This is the central board, and this is a single player's setup, so you'll imagine that there's four of these usually around the table. How the game starts is every player will randomize these sticks over here into a certain order, and then the one remaining one will get set onto the middle of your player board. This also shows your beginning resources. Two wild action tokens, one of every resource, and then of course whatever action tokens you have from your action stick here anyway. So in this case, a boat, a pathway, and a bonfire action token will be my starting pool of resources. On a player's turn, they will take either an action using, a co uh, using one or a combination of these action tokens, or they will pass. We'll explain passing here in a second. On a typical turn, a player is going to reference this here, which is also uh, their cheat sheet, and they'll take one action by spending the appropriate tokens. Or they can spend any two tokens as a wild. You can spend a pathway green token to go ahead and grab one of these pathways here from, this, from the bottom of the board. We'll add a red one out here, and you add them going from left to right. The first several will cost one. These ones here indicate that they will cost two. To take a boat action, players will discard one boat token to move the boat one space, two to move it two spaces, or three to move their boat to any space. So by spending my boat token here, I can move this, well, here's the exception, from the beginning space to any island that I would like to. Now if I grab, if I go here using the boat action, I'm also allowed to take either of these other actions as a small bonus continual action. So the red ones allow you to grab these task tiles off of the island that you're on, and the angel can allow you to, or the guardian token can either allow you to grab a guardian if you're at its island, or to move the guardians along your own pathway to collect more resources. As a demonstration, I will just go ahead and grab this one, this task here, and I'll place it onto this, uh, onto this particular area to become a bonfire, then I'll grab this guardian. Next up are the purple. This is the bonfire action. By spending bonfire tokens, one allows me to rotate what looks like a pink elephant, but is actually the bonfire marker. You can rotate it one space for one bonfire token, two spaces for two, or for three tokens you can rotate it any direction that you would like. I'm going to rotate mine this way. When I do this, I can take two of the three available benefits. I can either grab a resource or an action token, and or I can grab one of these bridges or gateways. And this will go, starting on the right side of my board to the left, onto a matching bridgeway area, with the, hopeful, with the hopefulness that I will eventually be able to connect these across the way, and eventually have a pathway, starting from the left, that also has a bridgeway because another thing I can do with my guardian movement action is to eventually move my guardians into a spot here onto a bonfire that I have completed. We'll discuss that, but that'll be a way to get bonus points. The last action that you can take is to grab cards. You have to spend a combination of a card and two resources, or two card actions and one resource, to grab one of these cards here. These are elders, and they will give you immediate scoring benefits for however you've done uh, their task, and you'll slot it under your board. Or you can grab one of these ones over here by paying its appropriate resource costs and tokens, and then you'll get some sort of ongoing benefit over the course of the game. Once again, slotting these over here to a maximum of six. Now, we talked about having these task tokens, these bonfires. When you complete one of these task tokens, you immediately get to flip it over, you'll earn that many points, and you'll take this 
uh, similar to but legally distinct from a certain Star Wars character shape, and it will become an elder. It will turn into an elder on the council here, not the Jedi Council, but it's something that will allow you to take a one-time bonus action. So if I go here, I could, for example, move guardians, or I could claim any guardian that I wanted to, which would then allow me to go ahead and say, grab this one. And now I have possession of two guardians, of this particular combination, which allows me to flip over another task token and take this fella, and I'll put it over here for two wild resources and a wild action token, for example. These cannot go to the same council space. They have to go to different ones. However, if I complete any of these things, say by having all six cards filled in or all of my tasks uh, filled in, or whatever it may be, I can take one of these neutral counselors and add them to any spot to take that action, that benefit, and I can even share with something of my own color. Now the reason that we'll be doing this is because we want to uh, fill this council area with a certain number, depending on the number of players, which will trigger the last five rounds of the game. There are these tokens here that will represent the countdown of five, then four, three, two, and one. On a player's turn, they can either continue to take actions during this countdown, or they can pass for the rest of the game and take this, this number of points, depending on what number is shown on the tiles here. Now, as I mentioned, there is also the option on your turn, once you are down to a single uh, action token, you can instead pass. When a player passes, they'll take one of these two, either the top or the bottom of these action sticks, and they will take it and place it onto their player board in any way they'd like, as long as it stays within this little grid here. If they make similar actions touch each other in this case, not only will I get a, a single red and a single uh, guardian, but I'll also get, in this case, two bonfire action tokens. And then that will be my turn instead. And then play will continue until we trigger the end of the game, at which point the player with the most points is the winner. So there you go, that's, that's how the game is played. Uh, the theme of this game, what do you think about the theme of this game, Wendy? Um, is there a theme to this game? Yeah, I mean, look how there's, beautiful this cover is. It's gorgeous. There's a lot of vocabulary to the theme of this game. This game is like dictionary, yes. the board game. It, yeah, I do yeah. not remember what anything is called. We call everything wrong. Let's address the, the giant pink elephant in the room and admit that that bonfire token looks like a giant pink elephant, right? It, it does. I keep saying I'm spinning the elephant, and <laughs> there's that bonfire. We have our bonfires. We have our unlit bonfires, which I think have their own term. Task tokens, I believe. So we're lighting our tokens on fire to become bonfires. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're not burning <laughs> this game. No. But I, I don't love this game. I'm just going to yeah. come out and say that. More than I don't love this game, I think that this game is very complicated, right? There's a lot of those little action tokens that you have to kind of, you know, turn in and, mm -hmm. and collect and then turn out. You know, it's just, there's a lot of these little pieces that you use to accomplish very little per turn, I feel like. I think for me, the my biggest struggle with this game is that there's so much of a learning curve. Like, I feel like it's so steep. Um, the vocabulary, which we already mentioned, that you're reading the rule book and you're like, okay, this thing is a, oh, it's not a meeple, it's an acolyte. And this thing is a task token, which later will become a bonfire. Like, all of those things um, just adds to a learning curve. Just call call it something that gamers know is my is my thought. I think one of the I think two of the terms are like bridge and pathway, and we for sure were like, which one is which? And then ultimately you yeah. go through and you're trying to figure out okay, which one is the pathway, which one is the bridge and, and make these connections. You say, okay, now we've got those down, what's important about the difference between the two? And then it turns out that no matter what you do, it's probably worth about two points in yep. this game. You know, we made the joke that everything is worth two points, right? Stefan Feld games to have that joke of, <laughs> of point saladiness and everything. And this one, I wouldn't actually describe as a point salad. I wouldn't. So that's the other part of the steep learning curve is that I started the game and I said, how do I get any points? Like, I want to light a bonfire, that's great and all, but I don't know how to do that. And I want to build up paths or whatever those are around the top of my board. And I want to do that, but I don't know how to do that. And I think that that's um, one of the steep learning curves of this game is just that how do you do anything? It, it took me about 
half or two thirds way through the first game to realize, oh, this is how the game works. And for such a heavy, complicated, long game, I, I don't want that steep of a learning curve. It, and, and it's not just like, how do you do anything? Well, I know how to turn in this token to take this action, but also kind of why. There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of variations on the same action or a lot of kind of like little exceptions here and there mm -hmm. that turned me off from the explanation. The rule book is not laid out terribly well or very well written. It's, it's pretty confusing, I think. And I, yeah, I just had a hard time with my first game. In the second game, because, you know, the, the, each subsequent game gets easier and people tend to like it the more that yeah. you play it. But the amount of enjoyment that I get out of the subsequent game is not enough to keep me coming back to it, I think. Mm -hmm. and, so, I mean, I definitely enjoy this game more than you. I feel yes. like this game really shone when I finally understood, oh, okay, this is how I get resources. Resources are very hard to get in this game. So this is how I get resources. This is how I set myself up to get an extra action or an extra special thing. Um, when every time you complete the bonfires, you get to place that acolyte or that worker out on the board and you get a special action. Oh, I can move my boat now for free. Oh, I can get some resources for free, whatever it is. And that's where it really started to shine for me was I had a few bonfires all set up. I had worked a little bit on each one of them. And so then I could take a turn and get that extra action, which then set me up for next round to get another extra action. So I found that exciting in this game. Um, so I did have fun. It just, there was, a, there were small amounts of fun compared to how long and arduous the rest of the game was. And, and, and that's fair, right? Mm -hmm. There are fun, exciting moments. When you yeah. complete a task token, you know, a few things can trigger from that. But the problem is that I've only flipped over maybe like a max of five task tokens and turned them into bonfires, mm -hmm. like personal bonfires, separate from the main board bonfire. And so that is like an exciting moment but then all of the steps, all the little turns that you have to take. For example, right, you get action tokens by placing out those things in that grid, which is mm -hmm. really, I feel like, underwhelming. It's underdeveloped or underwhelming at least yeah. to put out those things, get some action tokens. And then you just sit there and go, I've got all these action tokens. And What do I do with them? They're not the actions I want. Now, see, and I think one of my things with this, this particular game is I feel like that certain of the mechanisms should have been their own separate game. <laughs> so like, I like the idea of, oh, your actions are on these little strips and to take those actions, you have to place them out and if you line them up, you get extra benefit, you know, benefits and bonuses, you get extra actions. I think that is a really cool game, but I don't want that to be the, like that to determine what I do on the rest of this very tight, big game. I want that to be the game. Because that's not an action selection driver. It is the sub driver for the action selection mechanism that you will then get to take on your next turn after. You know what I mean? It's so many everybody. steps. It's, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. that's the point. There's so many steps yeah. just to take an action that you don't even really love. You're like, oh, I had a boat, so I'm going to move the boat. But I have it, and I can't get another set of, I can't get the action that I want to take until. I'm down to one tile left. And you can spend two for a wild single other action, but many actions in the game really require you to spend two of a kind or something. Yeah. So are, am I going to waste four different action tokens just to take a level two red action token thing that I kind of wanted mm -hmm. to do? It doesn't speak to me. But yes, but to your point, the most fun moments are lighting that bonfire, putting your dude on the council, and getting this little thing that can kind of wombo combo, but the combos come too infrequently for, for my taste. Yeah, I also enjoy the timer at the end. Um, <laughs> I know exactly when the game's ending, and I can like count down to it. What, what is so funny? It's, this, uh, the, the countdown timer of the game epitomizes to me Stefan Feld design decisions that I, I don't understand, right? <laughs> when you hit 13 uh, counselor, little baby Yodas in the in the Jedi Council mm -hmm. area, in the circle, we trigger the ending of the game. And we're like, oh, okay, we're reaching the end of the game. You have five more turns. You have five, five more, more rounds. rounds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, given I'm okay with that, um, but I also would be 100% okay with just the game ended. 
Or you finish the round. You finish a round, or I've seen many games, you know, finish this round and then play one more. But it's five rounds, and you're supposed to pass around those, you know, five, four, three, two, one countdown tokens. You're supposed to pound, oh, pass yeah, them yeah, around the table, right. and then you can pass at that time to earn that many points. And I think if you just, if you can't earn four or more points in four rounds, like. You, who, you're playing the game wrong. Who's backing out? Uh, four points. Good. I'll just sit here and watch you play for another 20 minutes. I have nothing left, yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. The, Steppenfeld is a designer that I find very hit or miss in mm -hmm. general, right? And his more complex games that really feel like that bucket of mechanisms kind of duct taped together, if you can see the duct taping, I have a harder time getting past that. I'm fine that this is essentially themeless, and the, but the theme is almost counterintuitive. To oh, the game. I would agree with that. Yeah, and, and I feel I see the duct tape in between. It's not smoothly integrated. I'm willing to forgive a little bit of that, but there's a lot of this one for me. <laughs> there's a lot, and I definitely agree that it feels uh, mechanism pieced together. I would be very happy if like a fifth of this game was just gone. Like, let's just remove one fifth of this whole game, and let's make let's make a game out of what's left. Like, I, I think I would be so happy with that. Let's just get rid of the boats. Let's just get rid of the action selection tile puzzle. Let's just get rid of um, the cards. Like, why do we have the cards? Um, if we just removed, like, something from the game, I think it would be a better game. I, I'm really inclined to agree with you. Yeah. A lot of us at the table kind of walked away from it saying, like, this could have been two decent games, yeah. you know, but they were mishmashed together, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, and the cards definitely felt like they were there mostly just to break all the rules that were put in the game so that you could have cards. It's a very restrictive game. It's a very restrictive game. Yeah, and so like, oh, you can't do this thing unless you get this one special power card over here, Yeah, and then now you can do that thing and no one else can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that's an absolutely astute point that yeah. it feels like rules are there only to be broken by special cards and that's the only reason they're there. It's not intuitive. Yeah. This is, at the same time though, I recognize a lot of people like Steffenfeld's design philosophy mm -hmm. and a lot of people will like this game. And I do think that there are genuinely fun parts of this game. And I think that people are going to have a lot of fun puzzling the board together with your little like strips of, of action selection, driver tokens kind of things. Yeah. People are gonna really enjoy this one. If you're a Steffenfeld fan, if you are maybe one of his more diehard fans, I bet that you'll really think this one is a good thinky game. Mm -hmm. If you are not super into restrictive games and and can and I don't know, just don't like that awkwardness of all the mishmash of things, I think you're gonna be more like me. I'm giving this game a five out of ten. Ooh, a five out of ten. It's a five. I don't think that it's a I don't think it's a broken or an awful game. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a fun game. I don't want to come back to it. So five out okay. of 10 for me. So I gave it a six out of 10 because okay. I had fun. I had genuine fun every time that I played it. I just don't feel like I can recommend it because the amount of fun compared to the whole game wasn't there for me. So I gave it a six out of 10. Okay, yeah. So I, I don't, would you disagree that other people are really going to enjoy it though? I think so. I think there are people out there that, that have and will continue to enjoy it. Okay. So. All right. There you go. So that's our thoughts on Bonfire by Stefan Feld. Uh, my name is Chris Yee. And I'm Wendy Yee. Thanks so much for coming by the Dice Tower. Have a great one.